Today I'm going to take a look at this Beckman Industrial Universal Counter. This is the UC10A. I've read stuff that says it's 100 megahertz, but my frequency generator can only go up to 25 megahertz, so I'm not really sure if that's the case or not. I can't really find much uh, official information on this thing. Uh, it simply has a frequency input and uh, this like frequency ratio time interval input. And there's an attenuator and it's got a range selection. And there's a few functions it does. It does the uh, time interval and then the uh, it, it basic counter. So you can see it's just counting up with each pulse. And uh, I believe this is just telling you the 10 megahertz reference. This is uh, just an internal uh, basic oscillator. There's nothing fancy in this thing. I think this is a fairly low cost unit. And you can adjust the gate time to get more resolution at the cost of uh, longer spaces between updates, all the way up to 10 seconds, and you can reset and blah, 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 blah. And there's just a basic power button. One thing I did notice while working on this was that I'm getting a between 100 and 300 kilohertz signal coming through whenever I have a wire attached. And I couldn't figure out what that was from. Like maybe this thing just wasn't uh, um, calibrated properly or there was something wrong with it because uh, I haven't really played around with this thing. I picked it up really cheap. I think it was like 20 bucks on eBay. I did figure out what it is. It's actually caused by the cheap LED floodlight that I use to shoot my videos. It puts out a lot of interference, even through um, a really nice surge suppressor that has uh, filtering on it. I guess it just doesn't work the other way. I don't know. Either way, uh, I actually hear it on my um, amplifier when I'm listening to music, and if I have the uh, LED light plugged in, I can actually hear a buzzing through the right channel. But if I unplug the light, it goes right down to zero. So yeah, don't take any of the measurements in this uh, video too accurately because there's obviously a degree of inaccuracy when it's receiving weird signals. But I can set my frequency generator to 25 megahertz and turn on the output. That would help. There we go. So it does work. And uh, yeah, it's pretty basic. You can. Um, like I said, you can increase the accuracy and whatnot by switching uh, through different um, gate times. On the back, there's simply an IEC mains input, a little place to wind up a wire, and uh, main tie one. With the cover off, it's a pretty simple design. We just have the main board and a small board for the controls and the display. Uh, actually, it's only the display on that board now that I look at it. Um, all the controls are the uh, push buttons along the bottom of the board. The board simply has a uh, I, the IEC mains input, and you've got a small transformer, bridge rectifier, some filtering, and a main controller. And wow, it's kind of warm already. It's only been on for like 10 minutes. Anyway, uh, and just some basic logic. It's uh, all three ho through hole. Uh, there's nothing really custom in this that I see, so I think it would be fairly repairable if it was broken. The only thing I've really noticed that, uh, you know, if, you've, if you're working on one of these you should take caution of, is that these connectors all appear to be the same, <laughs> with all the same pinout, or uh, color code. So if you're working on one of these, make sure you're keeping note of where each one of these three wires goes because uh, yeah, they all run out to the display and they're obviously uh, cable tied so that you get them roughly in the right spot. But just in case, uh, you may want to take a picture of them before you uh, disassemble it just because you might end up frying your uh, LED display. The heart of this thing is the Intercell ICM7226A. <laughs> this is a completely integrated frequency counter and a uh, lead driver. <laughs> so it's pretty much just the analog front end and this chip. The A in the de um, part number refers to that it's the common anode model. If you get the B model, it's for a common cathode. So it's really just the entire thing on a chip. Uh, we've got a 10 megahertz oscillator right here and it's just a standard oscillator. And uh, yeah, so it's not like a fancy temperature controlled or oven oscillator, but uh, in theory you could replace it. 
One thing I noticed while uh, taking this thing apart is that the 10 megahertz oscillator is actually hooked up to a big ground plane and the heat sink for this 7805 voltage regulator, standard 5 volt voltage regulator. The uh, only reason I can think of that they do this is that they want to keep it at a somewhat constant temperature because this thing probably pulls a pretty um, steady amount of power. They probably thought they could get a bit of temperature stability by just attaching it to the voltage regulator, which makes a little bit of heat while it's running. This is most of the front end. It's all mostly analog switches and other count devices used for counting the, the input signal. And we've got a bunch of these caps. or 85C rated, kind of cheap ass caps. They say they have a vent, but I don't see a vent on them. It must be vented at the bottom or something. Because uh, the sides of them do say vent. But, yeah, they don't have the kind of characteristic scoring on them like this. What you can see on this one, there's a big score mark in it for if uh, they go horribly wrong. They're all pretty much the same. I think they're all 100 mic, 25 volt ones. I would replace them, but I actually don't have enough 100 mic caps just sitting around. So, And I'd probably have to adjust all the um, trimmer pots and capacitors that are in here, which would be a little annoying. I don't really really have a super accurate um, frequency reference in order to test this. Uh, the front of the case is this uh, kind of red, I can't remember what this stuff's called. It's a, it's a red plastic, it's used on a lot of um, display covers for, for red LED displays. And you can see that there's kind of this dodgy connection <laughs> like the, the the BNC connectors are literally just screwed onto the plastic there's no real attachment they're just soldered wires to them and you've got this long ground cable running straight from the mains input which also breaks off and goes to the board and uh, yeah there's not much else in here there's a buzzer right here which uh, I think it does have a cutout so it, it properly projects the sound down I'm not going to completely disassemble this thing, partially because the display is actually soldered into the board and uh, the connectors, the BNC connectors are also soldered to delicate wires that I don't want to have to disconnect for no real reason. The mains input has a fuse and there's also a grounding plate on the, uh, it's actually no it's just foil, it's grounding foil on the top and bottom just for uh, shielding. There's also a little piece of metal to connect the two and I'm sure it's connected to the oh yeah there's screws so the uh, screws are probably what connects it to the mains ground and yeah there's not much in here it's a pretty basic design I just thought I'd do a little video on it since I'll probably end up selling it I, I don't really have a use for it my uh, Siglin SDG 1025 does uh, frequency counting uh, I don't know how robust it is but it does do it so I don't really need a, a whole standalone unit although this thing is uh, very small and light one thing I notice is look how cute the little uh, bridge rectifier is it's on long legs so it stays cool they even insulated two of the wires Aww. as you can see I don't have that much room on my desk I have my test equipment kinda just stacked up I haven't really done any videos on this stuff other than the uh, Corad power supply. I've got my uh, Heiko Triple Eight D. I've got my uh, Siglent uh, SDG Ten Twenty Five, which I mentioned already, and I picked up a HP Thirty Four Seventy Eight A multimeter, and uh, I've got my little cheap ass Eight Fifty Eight D hot air gun. But yeah, I don't really have a proper shelf. I'd really like if my table was long enough or um, deep enough so that I could have a shelf up top and put all my test equipment on. Like everyone seems to do on YouTube, I just don't have the space for that, unfortunately. 